So this video I've been wanting to make for quite a while. I don't have it yet because I've never really been the person to put my personal business out there. It's just not for any particular reason. It's just how I am. But I thought that this would be important to talk about because I see a lot of women actually sharing their stories on the internet and it's still kind of a taboo thing like just like depression, suicide and health related things and abuse and that whole thing that happens all the time that people don't talk about. And that is pregnancy loss. Now I know like you probably clicked on this like I think it's gonna be a sad video but it's not. I watched a lot of other girls' videos and I totally support them and send love out to them. And I think it's amazing that women are coming together and supporting each other on this platform and in this community. But what I did notice is all of them were, I don't wanna say negative. They were sharing their feelings, sharing their story, but they're all like very sad videos. And while losing anything is sad, I cried in sixth grade when my pet bird died like i cried when my grandma died like losing anything is sad okay i'm not saying that i was like happy that this happened definitely not but i did very much see the positive side of it as well so my husband now proposed to me december 24th so christmas eve of 2018 and we didn't know that we were pregnant at that time he just proposed to me and I was like yes definitely he actually did it in my parents house okay and a few days later my period was supposed to come actually on Christmas day it didn't come and a few days later we took a pregnancy test and it was positive and I was like oh my god like I did not expect this like holy crap of course okay, if you're having sex it's a possibility. I know it's a possibility. I don't, I'm not saying that, okay? But it's just one of those things that you don't think it's actually going to happen to you. Kind of like getting married, you know? You don't really think that it's going to happen to you. I know it does. Or graduating high school, or graduating college, but whatever. So I was excited. I'm like, oh my god, like, I don't think I'm ready to be a mom yet. But I'm going to embrace it fully and take it for what it is and do this thing. And the reason I say that... I don't think I was ready yet at that point is I still had some goals that I wanted to achieve before, before becoming a mother. I was just procrastinating at that time in my life. I never really put myself full force into it. So I was scared. I was like, oh my God, like I haven't done any of these things yet, but it's okay, we'll work on it. And the first like two weeks, three weeks were okay. Like waiting to go to my doctor's appointment and then one day I was laying in bed and started having the most painful cramps I have ever felt in my life. Like when I say painful, if you've never been pregnant, you've never had a miscarriage, anything like that, think of the worst period pains you've ever had and then times that by like 10, okay? It was just excruciating, but I didn't really think much of it like I did, but I didn't really. And one whole night went by of just that happening and then I started bleeding and I was like holy crap I'm having a miscarriage I just kind of figured because I know a lot a lot of people actually before this this had happened to as well so I kind of already knew and I was like okay like this is God's plan you know like he knows I'm not ready yet he still has some preparations for me before my time comes to be a mother and that's okay but more of the sad thing was just everybody else was sad. My parents, sister, husband, all of our friends were like, oh my gosh, like, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, you know, I don't want pity. Like, that. Don't please don't feel bad for me. If you know me, you know that I don't really like talking about things that I go through because I don't want people to feel bad for me. And I don't want the point of this video is for anyone to feel bad for me. I actually want to give you guys a positive outlook on this whole subject so we actually we went to the ER because the cramps kept continuing and it kept hurting worse and worse and then I kind of confirmed it there and 
it was like, I was like, oh man, I was kind of bummed. But, I mean, because I had already announced it. So I was like, oh my god, like now I have to tell everybody that this happened. And I want to, because everyone's going to, like, oh my god, like that's so terrible. I'm so sad. All that gushy stuff that I didn't want them to do, they still did it. But that was going to happen because I would have to tell them. But I was a little bit like, I don't want to say relieved because it makes me sound terrible. But I was like, okay, I still have more time to prepare for motherhood. Because originally in my head, I was thinking like, I'm probably not going to be a mom till I'm like, that is weird. There's a squeaking in the other room. So I'm like 25, 25, between 25 and 30 was the timeline I thought I would get pregnant for the first time. And that's not how it happened. So I sat down and was like, okay, that time is approaching a lot faster than I think it is. I'm gonna be 25 in just a few short years. So I wrote down the goals that I wanna achieve, which was finish my certification, do that, get that done. Buy all of my YouTube equipment, which, yeah and start my blog, which I know I don't really have a lot of videos up yet, but that's because I'm just kind of getting used to getting in front of the camera and editing and all that stuff. But in the past seven months, I've done a lot, a lot of content writing, a lot of writing, a lot of staying up very late, working the whole time my husband's at work, which is anywhere from like 12 to 14 hours if he does PT or whatever. So I really pushed myself into this full force because I'm like, you know what? Like, we're not trying, we're not planning, but I learned that it's gonna happen when it's gonna happen and you, you don't know. You don't know when it's gonna happen. I mean, yeah, you can try and protect yourself or whatever, but you don't know when it's gonna happen. So, you know, I, I was like, God, if it's your plan for me to become a mom in the near future, then give me the motivation that I need to get where I want to be before I even conceive a child. And if it's going to be in the far future, just keep me going on a good path. And that's kind of what I've really been doing. I've been working out a lot. Not that my body was bad before. I didn't start really working out a lot because I was not liking my body. But I wanted to be <clears throat> as healthy as possible before... I get pregnant again, as healthy as possible, which after that miscarriage, I actually had a chemical pregnancy, I think. I'm not, okay. I think it's called a chemical pregnancy where we got pregnant like right after, like right after, okay? I didn't even have time to have a proper period and everything. And because I guess it was so soon after, it just, but it's not gonna work. Which I'm like, okay, like, I did not expect that either. And when I found out I was pregnant again, I'm like, okay, like, God, that's a little sooner than I expected. But I've already started working on myself a little bit. And this was in, like, like, Marches. Mar Marches. Like, March. Okay. So I embraced it and then had a miscarriage and was like, okay, Still have some time. I'm gonna keep working on myself, but this I keep getting pregnant for a reason. I'm a big person. Like I believe in signs. I believe in messages. Oh my god, my eyebrows, my eyelashes falling off. Just ignore that, okay? I believe in messages and signs and all that. So I'm like, there's a reason that I keep getting pregnant. I know it's not what I planned. You know, I had this whole written out plan for my life. Okay. But apparently it's God's plan, you know? Maybe he thinks I'm gonna be ready soon. Maybe that's why I keep getting pregnant so that he can get my attention. I don't know. I don't know. But I decided like, okay, I'm not a mother yet. I don't consider myself a mother. And I know a lot of people will be like, oh, you were a mother, you did get pregnant, whatever. And yes, I do get that. I guess kind of in a way I am. But right now I'm focusing on preparing to become a mother. Because like I said, I keep getting pregnant for some reason. I don't know what it is, but God knows what it is. And I'm just going to listen to him, okay? 
and that that's you, you keep having even just one miscarriage. It happened for a reason, and I know that's gonna suck to hear, but some of you take it a lot harder than other people, and that's just, that's okay, that's okay to be depressed about it. It's okay to just, okay, whatever, just moving on. It's okay to be in the middle. Everybody processes emotions differently, and everybody is in a different place in life. But I want to tell you if you want to have kids, whether you don't, you want to prepare to become a mother before you even get pregnant. That just means eating really healthy, getting into healthy habits. If you're going to not want to cuss around your kids, cut that habit now. If you're partying, cut it down. And for me, when I got pregnant the first time, I was struggling with being fully vegan. I was still craving chicken and cheese or whatever. And I did not want to eat any animal products, anything unhealthy while I'm pregnant. Which sounds extreme, I know, but healthy eating and just health in general is just a hobby of mine actually. Eating healthy is actually a hobby. I love making new recipes and coming up with different things. And that was important for me and I knew that it was important. So I was like, okay, you know, maybe I'm just being given a clean slate. So as of right now, I am fully vegan. I hadn't had any animal products in months, in months. And I feel really good. I feel absolutely amazing. It's weird what your body does and feels like when you go on a complete detox. I actually want to raise my kids vegan. I know I might get some hate for that. It's okay. You know what? We all have different ways we want to live our lives. But health is a big priority to me. And I have to be living healthy myself before I even bring kids in this world in order to be a good role model for that for them. And I know some of you you get pregnant unplanned and it goes through maybe like 14, 15, 16. Don't feel bad if you weren't preparing to be a mother first. That's not what I'm saying at all, okay? But for me personally, it is a priority. Like I grew up seeing a lot of toxic parenting with my friends' parents and just kids that I like babysat, I babysat a lot when I was younger and I saw a lot of different things. Amazing parents, iffy parents, just everyday parents, terrible parents, like just, I'm not going to call any of them out, you know, whatever, like I babysat a lot of people. I'm not going to bring any of their business into this video though. So I, I saw a lot of different things and I knew what I wanted when I was older and what I didn't want was some of the things that I saw. I've always known that being a healthy parent was a priority for me. But like being a parent is not my only thing that I want in life, you know? I also very much am into traveling. So that's why I started this YouTube channel because eventually I want to get to the point where I can just travel. And I had to start my YouTube channel. I haven't started anything like that because I didn't really, not that I didn't believe in myself, I was just procrastinating. And when I got pregnant, I was like, okay, like, I have to start working on this now. Not because I'm in a rush. I'm not in a rush. It's gonna happen 10 years from now, five years from now, or whenever God wants it to be. But I just realized how much I wasn't living for myself, you know? It's important to live for yourself before you become a mother. You can kind of have your own life and kind of have a foundation. And if that's you, you're going through miscarriages, you have been through one, use this time to solely focus on yourself. I mean, have a spa day every single day if you want to. Start a workout routine, start school, whatever it is you have to do, whatever you've been procrastinating. Use that pregnancy loss as a sign like, okay, like, hey, eventually you're gonna have to lead somebody and be a guardian and all this. It doesn't matter if it's gonna be tomorrow or 10 years from now, but God's trying to get your attention. Be like, hey, like, get your life together. Like, focus on these things, reach for your goals. That was the eye opener that I needed because I was just, I was not in a terrible place in life. I wasn't doing bad things at all. But I definitely wasn't working on my goals at all. So I guess that's my positive input on miscarriage. Is that it's like, hey, 
you're gonna be a parent sooner than you think it's gonna happen or maybe hey like you're gonna have to lead somebody eventually like not yet but I'm trying to get your attention so that you actually start to take your life seriously so you start to take your goals seriously you know you're not a child anymore it's time to step up and grow up whether you're a parent or not you know it's time for you now me personally the hardest part of it was the physical pain the emotional pain wasn't i mean i was like oh like that's kind of bummy like i didn't want that to happen you know but the physical pain was much much worse and the reason i think the emotional pain what was i didn't really i didn't feel any emotional pain really i was just like oh man like i was excited and now like like I'm not having a kid now, like I'm, it's kind of weird. It was more of like a weird feeling, okay? It was more of a weird feeling. But I didn't get past nine weeks either time. So the big thing for me was there wasn't any attachments there. And granted, yes, my husband and I did go out and buy everything we needed. But then like the first two weeks of finding out. But that's because A, we both have a healthy savings account because we're both savers, not spenders. And that's, the beautiful thing about us to, I guess another reason why we get along so well and B we're both over preparers we're like we're just gonna go and get everything so we don't have to worry about it at all over the next eight months whatever we still have all that stuff so whenever it does happen we're already we already have everything we need we don't have to worry about it so like I said if you're going through this with something that you're struggling with it's okay you know, it's gonna happen for you eventually. Just focus on yourself right now, whatever that means. And if you have gone through a miscarriage and you're not dealing with depression, I wanna let you know that that's okay. It's perfectly fine. Everybody, like I said, has different situations and it hasn't been said enough on here. A lot of the other girls just, this is totally okay. This is normal, but they talk about how upsetting and depressing it is and just how hard they took it. And there's not enough positive feedback and positive talk on it. And I believe that there can be negative and positives to everything. Okay, if that's you, it's okay. You are not a bad person. You're not gonna make a bad mom. It doesn't mean you're gonna love your kids any less at all. It just means that you're in a different place in life than some other people. If you have anything else that you want me to share with you guys, any advice that you want me to give, leave a comment down below. You can also follow me on Instagram at it's Kels. I'm not really going to talk much more about it, at least in this video, just because I kind of wanted to generally go over my story and share my positive mindset with you guys about it. But I may talk about it more a little bit. I don't know. But I guess if I feel like I need to. But like I said, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below.